Um, it makes me very happy to bring up uh, Matt Bayer from IPG's very own uh, advanced TV group at, Ma at uh, Magna Global and Walt Horseman from Audience Express. These guys are going to talk to us about some interesting insights in targeting TV viewers, customer viewing audiences. Um, take it away, boys. Thanks, everybody. So we are in the final Hello. stretch here. And I, Matt and I have prepared uh, a session which I think is going to be fun and interactive uh, to uh, make sure that we keep it lively here in the, uh, the final part of the session here today. So uh, just to give a little background on Audience Express, um, we founded the company about a year ago. And what we are is a programmatic TV platform that automates the workflow for linear TV campaigns. So what we effectively do is marry great audience data with great TV ad tech. And what that allows us to do is to follow audiences on TV. And this has actually never been able to uh, occur before. So it's really, really exciting. And if I can give a little intro of uh, Matt here, uh, I think Matt uh, you've got the greatest job that's uh, going on in TV right now because, uh, <laughs> you know, because what Matt is doing at Magna Global is um, really realizing the future of advanced TV using audience data for planning, buying, and optimization. And as a little background, uh, if I can give you some props, sure. Matt, uh, he has been a true innovator uh, for the TV industry and all advanced elements of the TV industry. In fact, Matt launched the very first combined interactive TV with addressable uh, campaign. And I have to say, uh, that, is, that, is, that is no small feat. So he has really been on the real leading innovation side of television. And as a personal uh, note, Matt is from New York, and he's a die-hard, as he's told me, <laughs> New York Mets fan. Yeah. Uh, I know there are a lot of folks here from, from, be Mets fans. <laughs> from New York who are Mets fans, and in his words, uh, Matt has said he is indeed expecting 1968 to happen once yeah. again. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, let's, uh, let's get started. And, um, we're going to have a little uh, interview session and talk about what's going on. And then we're going to have an interactive session, which will uh, uh, have some fun potential prizes for some members of the audience. And um, my first question for you, Matt, is, you know, we, Chris opened up the session yesterday and talked about uh, the overall strategy for IPG and the uh, right side of that, that great chart that talked about audience-based buying uh, as a complement to uh, contextual, traditional, environmental-based buying. Mm -hmm. So tell us what's, what's going on with that, and, and why is this audience-based strategy for TV important right now for IPG? Yeah, um, definitely following up on Chris's presentation yesterday, um, there's certainly a unique role that um, audience-based buying can take in a TV within a holistic TV or video plan. Um, so I, I think with the plethora of data out there, technology, and efficient um, costs for that technology, um, oftentimes this technology existed, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't cheap. Um, but I think the combination of that and just applying digital principles to television, um, we know television works. So I think it's about identifying and leveraging applicable data. Um, Keyword being applicable, not you know big data or 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 or, uh, or any, anything like that, but applicable client data um, or other third-party data to to make our buy uh, to make our buys and our, our media plans better and reach our customers, our clients' customers more efficiently, effectively than ever before. And 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 what is it like right now? Is because I know. You know, we've been talking about this idea of using data and, and television, and it's part of the strategy, but, yeah. but any insight in terms of, of, of why now is important? Yeah, I, w I would say now, again, is, is because of we have all these tools available at our disposal, and we're, we're doing our clients an and, uh, and, and injustice by not leveraging them. 
and doing it the same old way we always have been. So I think that's, um, uh, and again, I, the cost for the technology is much cheaper than it was um, uh, a long time ago. So I think, I think we'd be doing our clients an injustice by not leveraging that um, and not driving that, you know, l driving that audience-based approach as a complement, um, not as a replacement, but as a complement to an environmental buy and an environment-based buy, content buy. So we've got the technology, we've got the tools, we've got the data. We're making TV a little smarter, a little, yeah, yeah, little, 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 souping it up a little bit from what it's historically been. Is that yeah. fair to say? No, and 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 I mean, and Walt, you know this as as one of as as one of IPG's biggest partners. Um, you know that we we changed the conversation from age sex demo to to talk about more business targets and talk about uh, effective CPM against against our clients' real consumers and. Um, Although we're still in that, you know, we still have to fit in, in a in a GRP in an in HX demo GRP world. Again, it's using that applicable data to reach higher composition of our of our clients' true audience. So, um, gradually getting there, um, uh, gradually getting an effective CPM against a business target as part of a conversation or audience comp, um, obviously is a is a is a long road. But we're trying to day by day uh, change the conversation from from an h -sex demo to something more. Oh, sorry about that. I guess I don't have a future in Hollywood. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, to change the conversation more to um, effect effectiveness to reach their business, our clients' business targets. And, you know, one conversation that, that, that we have throughout this uh, conference and, and also, you know, just in the industry at large, which is lots of people here you and me talking about this and, and others and say, okay, well, that's all very interesting. That's, you know, you can, you're talking about this, you know, you can think about doing it. Uh, is it really happening? Yeah, absolutely. And at, and at grand scale, um, there has not been a, there has not been a campaign. Well, first we've done 30 plus campaigns for 15 plus advertisers across all different categories. Um, and we haven't had an advertiser not um, not do a second campaign. Um, most of the times, it's um, it's it's how quickly can we get back on, and what's our and can we evolve the strategy almost? So it's 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 you know we're the conversation with some clients. It's almost um, it's almost like we have to kind of guide them. But in other cases, they're pushing us, and in, in, in a lot of cases, that oh we can use it. It could take this role in a media plan, or it could um, I could use it to reach this audience, or you know what I I. So the conversation is really interesting as far as uh, as far as clients getting on board and um, believing in it and understanding the value it plays in a in to Chris's point a holistic media plan. So we're doing it. It's it's real. It's happening. Clients are not just in test mode mm -hmm. because they are coming back mm -hmm. and re-upping and let's you know I liked what I saw so let's do it again. Uh, what are some of the insights that you have found looking at now all this audience data? And I know you've got a wealth of data. You've got mm -hmm. the AMP data set, uh, which is incredibly rich. There are multiple other data sets that are, that are coming on. Give us some examples of where you have found some um, uh, insight or something that maybe challenged the conventional wisdom or discovery of mm -hmm. new environments that were relevant based on on the audience data yeah. and uh, certainly and, and and again I think this is one of the key points uh, eighty five percent of the things of 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 the dis of, of the discoveries that we find are are things are just confirming things we already know um, I think it's that other fifteen percent um, that's that's really valuable uh, so one of the things for a for a truck buyer for a truck contender um, the highest composition day part was overnight and late night. Um, so kind of redefining what prime time is um, and conventional wisdoms. In a lot of cases, we do see that prime time and weekend and all the day parts that we've, that, you know, we've demanded networks to, to, um, to be a predominant part of our, our plan um, is, is the case. But I think every now and then we'll, we'll, there's that insight after a campaign airs that's really intriguing and, and, and I think makes uh, makes it kind of a no-brainer to, to, to leverage the data and the tools available to make your buy smarter. And again, it's, it's the 85% that we're just confirming, and it's that 
that 15% discovery that I think is really interesting and, uh, and, 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 gets clients, um, and gets clients interested in coming back. You know, and, and, and too, uh, you know, we had that uh, campaign that we did together where the client was very interested in homeowners. And so we were looking at different uh, networks and day parts that did very well for homeowners or, or not for homeowners. And yeah. what was an interesting kind of challenge to the conventional mm -hmm. wisdom was the, the client said, well, DIY should be on the plan because we're targeting homeowners. And when we looked at the data, it turns out that DIY really under indexes, interestingly, for homeowners. And that was kind of one of these things where we kind of scratched mm -hmm. our heads and said, well, this is actually the really interesting elements of, of doing this because it challenges some of the conventional wisdom. And we thought about it and said, you know, maybe DIY is actually folks who are aspirational. Uh, they're not homeowners yet, uh, but they are watching the network. They will be homeowners in the future, but, but not quite yet. So um, it's, uh, it's always interesting, I think, as we mm -hmm. have, we've, you know, Matt and I have looked at different data sets. Uh, it's always the fun part of doing all this, which is, wow, who would have thought that? Uh, and so the, now comes the interactive part where uh, the, the audience and all of you guys get to participate. So I'm going to set this up. Uh, Matt has uh, prepared a list of 10 questions. Uh, they are true or false questions. So uh, they are about audience, uh, data for different brands and which brands over index on certain networks. And what we're going to do is uh, Matt's going to ask the question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try to look out at the audience. Everybody has to vote, so vote early, vote often. Uh, raise your hand if you think that the question is true. Uh, and then we'll ask you to raise your hand if you think the question is false. Uh, everybody must vote. And uh, Chris has generously uh, made an offer that uh, if anyone gets eight of the 10 questions correct, then he's going to buy you a shot at the bar right after the conference is over to make sure that you have a very lubricated and happy uh, trip home. Uh, hopefully, you're not driving. You're taking a taxi back to the airport. So uh, <laughs> uh, with that, uh, let's start with the first question. Sounds good. And we'll also fund the cab to the airport. Well, so. um, the num <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, the number one TV network that over indexes for United Airlines buyers is CNBC. And by the way, this is purchasing data. So this is, this is actual credit card data. Um, so the number one network that over indexes for United Airlines buyers is CNBC, true or false? All right, true, raise your hand. Okay, false, raise your hand. I think the falses have got that one. It was true. And that is true. All right, so that minority of you, you were, you were correct. Um, military Channel is in the top 10 networks that over-index for Victoria's Secret buyers. True or false? Who thinks that's true? Everybody's got to vote, remember. Uh, okay. Who thinks that's false? That looked like a tie. This was a really interesting insight. See, this is, this is new data discovery. M Military Channel is indeed one of the top 10 networks that over-index for Victoria's Secret buyers. You may not buy it, but... <laughs> right. Um, that's true. Uh, is that because you got the answer wrong? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> MLB Network was high on there too. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. Um, Military Channel ranks higher for Victoria's Secret buyers than Adult Swim. Who true thinks that's true? Or false. One person. Think, okay. You're following Chris. Uh, all right. So, very small portion think that's true. Who thinks it's false? Okay, not everybody's voting. You do have to vote. <laughs> uh, I think the false, false have that won that one. Yeah, it's false. Adult Swim is number five. Military Channel is ten. Centric is the number one network that over-indexes for State Farm buyers. True. 
raise your hand for true. All right, nobody thinks that's true. Send, oh, uh, I'll, one person thinks it's true. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll repeat the question. Centric is the number one network that over indexes for State Farm buyers. Centric. It's a BT owned uh, um, network. Okay, we have about three people think it's true, four people. Uh, and false, okay, the falses have that one. Yeah. Trace is the number one network for State Farm buyers. Oh, oh I'm so, false. It's false. False. You got that one, Chris. Trace is the number one network for State Farm buyers. Hands for true. Trace is a, uh, an MTV Hispanic yeah. network. Tres, MTV that, tres. All right, nobody thinks that one's true. Any, all right, so Al, you think, everybody thinks that's false. False, okay. The, the answer is true. Next question, for Sears buyers, the number one over-indexing network is Golf Channel. Hands for true? Okay. okay. Hands, hands for false? The answer to that one is true. Uh, Game Show Network is in the top five of over-indexing networks for Sears buyers. Hands for true. Hands for false. About Trues you. have that. True. That is true? Yes, that is, the answer is true. Um, ABC Family is the number one network that over-indexes for SeaWorld customers. True, hands for true. Put it back there, okay. And hands for false. The answer is false. Disney Channel is number one, but we can't buy advertising there. There, so uh, right, right, right. <laughs> and <laughs> it was the. I think we're keeping with the Orlando theme here. Um, and then Comedy Central is the top five of over-indexing networks for SeaWorld. Hands for true. And hands for false. Oh, the false, falses have that one. The answer is true. It's number three, actually, after Disney and ABC Family. For Fandango buyers, the number one network that over indexes is TBS. Hands for true. Hands for false. Not uh, even. It's yeah, it's about even. So the uh, false, the number one is Adult Swim. So, I think we've, I think to, I think we've definitely made our point that the, um, that some of the preconceived notions are are, uh, are are in, are in fact sometimes not true. Yeah. Oh yeah. Before we move yeah. on, yeah. Anybody get eight? Chris, can we bring it down to seven? Can we negotiate? All right. <laughs> How many did you get, Chris? All right. Yeah. Buy yourself a shot. <laughs> well, I think, you know, it is, we sort of set this up a little bit, obviously, to uh, make the point that some of this is very much the conventional wisdom, like the SeaWorld example with uh, Disney Channel and ABC Family, but then some of the counterintuitive uh, thinking about Fandango for heavy purchasers for movie tickets uh, are not on what I think conventional wisdom would think would be something like yeah. a TBS or a general entertainment network, but actually, you know, Adult Swim. So the, you know, a lot of this uh, data is, I believe, starting to challenge the conventional wisdom. And so, uh, Matt, you're out on the front lines talking about these kind of concepts to uh, clients, and it's, it's, you know, as we've seen from this room, it's probably challenging some of their thinking. It's, it's providing some new insight into uh, where media planning and buying and optimization ought to be focused. So what has been the reaction, the, the positives of, of taking this kind of approach to 
especially, let's say, traditional uh, TV buying uh, uh, folks? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a, there's, uh, you know, certainly I, I would say most are understand the role um, that, you know, that, that a programmatic or a data-driven audience-based buy takes. Um, but yeah, there's certainly, you know, there's certainly pushback in some cases um, as far as, as far as, you know, um, sh our buy needs to be 75% prime or 80% prime or it needs to be, um, or other sort of conventional notions that, you know, sometimes are, are, are true for, a, you know, for, for one of the clients, a luxury auto, you know, prime and weekend do work, um, but then there are other um, sort of targets or more granular audience-based targets. Um, that you know that's not, might not might, might not necessarily be true. Um, the other thing I think that is very interesting uh, is starting off a conversation from a TV perspective, um, which which is rare to start off with not an age sex demo conversation, but really understanding who your audience is, who you want to, who you um, who our clients really want to speak to, and I think certain and I think some clients or t TV clients. Um, have never really been asked that from a TV perspective, so they, so they don't really know. So I think it's part of our job, which has been really interesting, um, to understand who their key consumer or their highest performing consumer segment is, and then applying that to their TV buy. So I think that's, for me personally, that's the most interesting part of the conversation, is kind of ending with an age sex demo, um, but starting off with more um, client-centric and customer-centric uh, targets. So it's kind of taking, going through that kind of evolution of this is a potentially new way to think about exactly. um, how yeah. to select different uh, networks, day parts, mm -hmm. but then have, but then the context still of uh, the traditional currencies yeah. with with age and gender. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if we are now in two, 2014, let's fast forward to 2017. Uh, we are sitting here on this stage uh, having a drink because we've won the contest and have gotten <laughs> 10 out of 10 right. And Chris, has bought, and Chris has bought us a shot. Uh, so <laughs> we're having a drink and sitting here. So what is the world going to look like with respect to all of this audience-based buying uh, in 2017? I think, um, and I think it's already happened, but I, I truly think we'll... Um, will move to a world where we're making ad decisions and we're buying on ideally metrics beyond age, age sex demo. And I think that we're, we're doing a, we're moving the business forward in that we're, we're proving that TV works and we're trying to, we're trying to prove that TV um, combined with the principles of digital and a lot of the, and, and, and a lot of the positive aspects of digital um, uh, really Really is more impactful for our clients' business, and I think it's going to. I think it's going to help the entire industry, um, not just advertising agencies. It's going to help tech, technology platforms, vendors, TV networks, because I think we're actually going to. We're going to prove the. We're going to truly prove value of a TV spot, and I think that's a very interesting proposition. We're already, and we're already far, very far along on that path. But I certainly think there's, you know, there's certainly a long ways to go. But I think uh, the conversation certainly has started about, um, again, and I, I know I'm beating it to death, but talking more about um, business targets and, and, and customer targets as opposed to age sex demo. And I think, um, I mean, it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard to be, you know, uh, for to talk about adults 18 to 49 now with, with the plethora of data that we have. So, um, so I, I, I truly think when we look back, that will be, um, we'll be living in a world where that will be, if not the, not the common metric, that will be a, a more um, often spoken about metric. So this is here to stay? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know if we're gonna ever be trading on that, um, and I'm sure uh, there's a lot of opinions about, about that here. Um, and I'm not saying we should today or tomorrow, but um, I think we'll, that will be more in the, uh, in the, in the ad decisioning set um, when, we're, when we're going out and making buying decisions on behalf of our clients. Excellent. Well, thank you. We, I think we have five minutes if this clock is ticking correctly. Any questions from the audience for 
Matt or me on this topic of, of new audience yeah. data. And also before we get oh. to that, I know, I know um, you worked with a client, a, a very niche targeted client, uh, I believe it was a hedge, right. a hedge fund, and there was, there was actually really, I, I know I gave the truck, uh, the truck and tender yes. target um, story, talking about some of the unique insights um, from that campaign, but I know you have from a hedge fund perspective a, uh, a very unique story. Yeah, thank you. The, the, um, this is an inter interesting insight of a very early test that, that we did with uh, Audience Express where we have licensed uh, some smart TV data which has the IP address connected to uh, that viewership pattern of the data set. And we have a client who has a very, very specific uh, advertising audience segment. It turns out to be hedge fund uh, traders uh, and so normally this, this uh, client advertises almost exclusively on CNBC and Bloomberg and Fox Biz. And um, so they said, look, if we did a first party data match uh, of folks who have come to our uh, website in the last 30 days against your uh, smart TV viewership data, and can we figure out where uh, these, uh, this particular audience is actually watching on TV? And as it turns out, the highest indexing network day part was NBC Sports from 2A to 6A. So we kind of scratched our heads and said, wow, that seems very counterintuitive. And we went back to the client and said, you know, this is what the data is said. It's NBC Sports from 2A to 6A. We're not sure if this makes sense. And she told us, you know, interestingly, our major customer group trades in the international markets. And so they are up throughout the night and are working in different time zones. So it's highly likely that they're up between 2A and 6A, you know, doing their trading in Hong Kong and watching NBC Sports at the same time. So they started to shift part of their planning and buying. I mean, they kept with Bloomberg and Fox Biz and CNBC because you know, they knew that that was still core, but as this complement to what they were doing, they added NBC Sports overnight, and that's something that you know, they never would have come up with without doing this first party match. So I think we're gonna see in addition to you know, this data set that uh, Matt has talked about, which is very third party focused, we're gonna start to see a lot more first party uh, matching and, and clearly lots of privacy, lots of data hygiene have to come into play you know, with, these kind of, with this kind of activity, but it's incredibly rich and incredibly insightful uh, to be able to do this now for TV campaigns. Great, thank you. We're gonna actually uh, cut since we're running a little bit late and we wanna make sure we have enough time for David as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Uh, okay, so everybody stand up, stand up.